This is Cynthia Sue Larson with RealityShifters.com and I'd like to tell you that we are experiencing a massive upsurge in the Mandela Effect. It is just going crazy. This is a chart that I took yesterday. It's now August 2016. It goes back to 2010 when Fiona Broom coined the phrase. It starts spiking around last summer, July 2015, and now it's going quite high uh, in terms of people citing the term Mandela Effect. So what's going on since the term first came into being? Now you know if you've watched my other videos, read my blogs, listened to my podcast, gone to my newsletter and so forth at realityshifters.com that I've written about this, about dead people being alive again, about changes that we're experiencing with the Mandela Effect in my books, Reality Shifts and Quantum Jumps. Today I'd like to show you a couple of other books from other authors. Future Memory from PMH Atwater. She's the mother of the term reality shifts, which I believe is very excellent for describing what's happening. She has a chapter, chapter two, reality shifts, and she's describing it exactly as I later came to also talk about it, unbeknownst to me that she'd already written this. And then if you'd like the science behind what's going on I'll, that I'll be talking about today, please check out John Joe McFadden and Jim Al Khalili's book, Life on the Edge. And it's the coming of age of quantum biology. So let's talk about what these other reporters are noticing. One of them, and this, now I'm talking about Mark Laflamme in the Lewiston Sun Journal, and the link is on my blog, so you can just click below this video, go to the blog, read the links, read the articles. He noticed in a photo with his father, it always used to be that he was standing on one side of his father, now he's on the other side. He switched places, basically, in a photo that's been a family photo for decades. New Zealand Herald's Carl Pushman believes that he also remembers Berenstein Bears, spelled E-I-N. And Tom Siebert from San Diego City Beat has noticed a remarkable reality shift or Mandela effect involving the movie Moonraker. It's a James Bond film starring a couple of characters. This is Jaws, the character, Dolly, the character. Jaws had a mouthful of shiny teeth. Dolly had a mouthful of braces. So they had a cheesy falling in love moment that's no longer part of Moonraker. Somehow it's gone. But why then do so many of us remember it so clearly? And what kind of strange confabulation would this be that we would have invented such a thing to be so clear about it? So for myself and others who are experiencing these things, it starts looking like instead of confabulation and going with the old broken down models of classical reality that we've been limping along with with material realism for so long, it's time to start considering the possibility of what two-thirds of the scientists recently polled say, that you and I and everyone and everything exists in a superposition of states. That means many, many possible me's, many possible you's, and as consciousness we travel through them. Therefore, sometimes it's conceivable that we might collectively remember, just like we've seen where a river used to flow, that the river has moved, reality has shifted. We can tell it used to be somewhere else only in our memories. And that's what makes it so frustrating to prove. However, there's a growing body of evidence, such as I present in my book Quantum Jumps when I talk about flashbulb memories, the research studies done at Emory University where students who noticed the Challenger space shuttle explosion documented what they remembered happening one day after, three years later, compared their handwritten notes, and they said, that's my handwriting, but that's not what happened. Some of the students really noticed something had shifted. I also want to bring to your attention something from that's mentioned in this book, Life on the Edge. If you like science, you want to explore further and get into the basis of what's going on, check out the work of John Forster Cairns. Here he is pictured back in the 60s before he came up with a world-shattering realization. He looked at the E. coli coli bacteria and noticed that when he starved them in a little petri dish without enough nutrient auger and the only food he provided was something they had no way to digest, instead of dying these E. coli bacteria would inexplicably spontaneously mutate to suddenly be able to eat exactly the food he provided. Now his takeaway from that is a little bit strange based on old ways of scientific thinking, what he said was the cell could produce a highly variable set of mRNA molecules and then reverse transcribe the one that made the best protein. 
So if we look at the fact that under stress, organisms such as bacteria can do that, then it makes sense that we might start recognizing that under stress, entire communities of people connected through the internet could start recognizing that we are in fact experiencing alternate realities, Mandela, Mandela effects, reality shifts. And the only evidence is in our memories, but we are starting to share that. We've got other people posting videos, writing blogs, writing articles, and sharing what we remember, which then is the way that we can share this information going forward. And I, as an optimist, like to believe, based on what I observe in nature, that nature optimizes. Just like photosynthesizing plants are almost ridiculously efficient, just like this fine-tuned universe is almost off the charts statistically improbable, I believe that you and I and everyone and everything else are doing the same thing. And we are selecting with a handshake between the future and the past through quantum physics logic uh, some of the best possible solutions that may not seem optimal in the moment but that we can stay on track with simply by asking my favorite question which is how good can it get? Until next time, this is Cynthia Sue Larson. Please check out the blog article that has a lot more detail with the links. Just click down below in the description of this video. Thanks so much.